Right, good day Junior Tuckies and welcome to this video in a series dealing with the DNA code for life. My name is Mr. P. Mr. Brigo is going to be taking you through this section and a few future sections. Um, hopefully we'll be gaining a better understanding of life sciences to make you better prepared for your final exams. The first thing we're going to look at when looking at DNA is the base unit. Um, so what we're looking at here is we're looking at a nucleotide that is made up of three parts. The first part is our phosphate. Second part is going to be the sugar, a pentose sugar. And the third part of our nucleotide is going to be a base. Now, these are all very, very unique, looking specifically at DNA versus RNA. But we look at this as being the nucleotide. Okay, what you're going to see now is I'm busy drawing one of the sugar phosphate backbones that we're going to be finding in a DNA strand. You can see that the phosphate group and the pentose sugar form this backbone of what will become either DNA or RNA. Particularly in this case, we're looking at a DNA strand. You can see the, the nitrogen containing bases form a specific sequence once all of these nucleotides are joined to each other chemically. And this base sequence becomes very, very important when we have protein synthesis taking place. We have a second sugar phosphate backbone with what we call complementary bases pairing alongside. And we find this base pair very, very unique as well because they don't just pair with any other base. They're very unique base pairings that we look at here when we look at DNA. They're always going to be complementary. Now looking at DNA versus RNA, our complementary bases are slightly different, but the basic structure of a nucleotide remains the same. Each of these nucleotides would have a phosphate group, and you can see that I've labeled it there. I've given DNA a nice red color and RNA a nice mustard color for us to differentiate between the two. Very nice questions in the final exam relate to us comparing these two nucleotides most likely in a table of comparison, but we can identify the differences between them now. So each would have a phosphate group. We're going to have DNA, pentose sugar being a deoxyribose sugar, whereas RNA, that pentose sugar, is a ribose sugar. When looking at the bases, we find that DNA bases are made up of cytosine, guanine, adenine, and thiamine, and when looking at RNA bases, we have the same bases except when dealing with RNA, the thiamine is actually swapped out for uracil. So we have cytosine, guanine, adenine and uracil when looking at RNA bases. So these are some very nice differences to make note of. Here we can see the double-stranded DNA, double helix. We find that our base pairs are paired up, as we said before, where cytosine and guanine are complementary bases with adenine and thiamine being the other pair of complementary bases. We see that this is a double-stranded uh, nucleic acid, DNA nucleic acid, uh, because we have two of these sugar phosphate backbones, Okay, one on each side. The sugar being deoxyribose in this case, because it is a double-stranded DNA nucleic acid. Here we can see, we're going to compare this now to an RNA nucleic acid. We have a single-stranded nucleic acid. The complementary bases over here, obviously looking at RNA, it is going to be transcribed from a DNA strand. And wherever we have a base pairing of adenine with thiamine in our DNA, as you can see in the first base of our RNA nucleic acid over here, our adenine pairs up with or um, would allow for a uracil to replace the thiamine when we actually form through transcription our RNA nucleic acid. So that's where we have the substituting out of the uracil for um, thiamine. We have a single strand very important to make note of that when we're looking at RNA. Our bases are the same except for uracil substituting out the thiamine. And our pentose sugar in the sugar phosphate backbone is no longer deoxyribose, but it is a ribose pentose sugar. 
The last thing we're going to look at in this video is very, very quickly how the DNA double helix is held together. We can see that our complementary bases, cytosine and guanine, are held together by weak hydrogen bonds. They're very, very nice to, to, to make a note of here is that there are three weak hydrogen bonds between the guanine and the cytosine. And between adenine and thymine, we only have two weak hydrogen bonds. Now, during transcription, these weak hydrogen bonds need to be broken, and this is facilitated by enzymes, particularly DNA helicase enzyme. Well, I hope that this video has given us a little bit of a better understanding in uh, DNA and RNA, particularly in the way that the nucleic acids are formed up, but also in the nucleotides and how we can compare the different nucleotides with one another. So please tune in to some of the further videos that deal with DNA. Uh, make sure that you get a copy of the theory booklet as well as the um, theory worksheet and memorandum as well. These will definitely guide you as to the types of questions you're going to get in your final exam. I'm looking forward to seeing you all again. Have a fantastic afternoon.